morning. So today we are hopefully going to finish the majority of the double crop beans. So dad's going to combine, BJ's going to haul some grain, and I am going to do some underground work on the new house build. So yeah, good news is it's 28 degrees. Kind of missing that 70 degree weather we were having. is there's only 60 not even 60 acres left on this farm and then it will be done closing in on the end finally now really and truly once we finished up corn most of the, the harvest stress was off I mean these beans are there but they're really not very good we're just kind of yeah we want to get them out we want to get those bushels but there's just not a lot of bushels there it's definitely not a labor intensive high stress situation anymore Good news. It's tasty. Good news. Hmm. You got to pick me up from the tire shop. Well, I'm going to try to do uh, some double crops down here. Got about uh, 60 acres down here this farm. And we got a couple, another 40 and another 30, another farm. Hope they get this done today and go up here to do that tomorrow, hopefully. It's cold out, 29 degrees, so it'll be froze dry, I suppose. Got fuel up here. Get fuel first. And then we'll head down there and see what we can do. Hey, we got started here. Got hooked up finally. It looks not too bad, I guess. 14.4 moisture. 14 ones, that's better than I thought to be. About white, like it was the other day when we were running. Chicken hawk right over there. Waiting to get something there when it comes out. Know where we went now. Got dust rolling anyway, so that's a good sign. So I guess we're going to be okay, looks like it. So. Okay, into the skids. Here we go. Now, some of you may remember this spring we were kind of shopping for skid steers, and well, we still haven't bought a skid steer. To be honest, if we do this combine like I think we're going to, we're probably keeping this skid steer. So this was a lease skid steer. Lease was up. Price was really good though. Uh, the buyout price, especially for the hours we have on it, so we kept it. And it might just have to suffice for a while. Really hoping to go to a tract unit, but. Uh, well, we don't use a skid steer a whole heck of a lot, and we use a combine quite a lot. So, order of importance. Huh, it's like it hurt me talking about it. Well, I guess we won't be using that thing. That's fantastic. That's fun. That's fun. We'll just use the mini excavator. It's basically going to use that to backfill my conduit trench. But uh, yeah, I don't know if I really want to drive it a mile back in the driveway. Did that twice. But did get it back in the back in the building at least. At least it didn't die for good right in the middle of the yard. Something's something's messed up. Well, I got one dump. Got one dump. Dumped it and shut the thing off. Separator off. That mistake. Now the wheel won't turn. Said not. Real sensor is bad or something says not detecting any speed, so I've tried it manually and air which way it won't work. So there's a sensor out on the end out there. Gotta take that tube off and all that off. See if I can figure that out, see if it'll work. Gotta go over and get some tools out of my truck. So I'll just come up here to the shed, try to get partially in the shed there, bring in wind. It's cold out there. And the wind's blowing. So maybe I get this side in the shed there and kinda of break the wind at least. Take that shield off, see what that speed sensor, you think it would run on manual, but it don't run manual automatic or nothing. It won't do nothing. And you can't, you can't combine without a reel. We will try this route. So our electric ditch is complete. Meter's on the house been following the channel for a while I've been kind of working on that in the morning sometimes and uh, 
electrician got the meter installed. I've still got to dig in a couple of these junction boxes. I don't know what you call them. Basically the green box in and outs or something like that. I got to dig those in, cover this ditch up, and then AEP, our power company, can come pull our uh, service into the house. So that would be, that'd be fantastic. Oddly enough, the Amishman want electric to finish the house. So we got to get that in the ground and we have to get it level. I think, and if I'm wrong, hopefully AEP doesn't see this before they get the service in. Let's get out and see how we're how we're sitting there. We might have to do some more shoveling. I don't know. Okay. Whew. It's cold out there, folks. Alrighty. One down, one to go. Yeah, I found out what's wrong. Set screw come out of this. Boy, that slide out a little bit. There's a moon key there, and it to slid in. So it was just turning on the shaft. So I didn't have a set screw. Right one, got back in there. Got the moon key in there. I don't know, I can just try it and see what happens. I think it'll stay in there, hopefully. We'll find out. So one other thing we're doing is also covering this ditch up. Would have been a lot faster with the skid steer, but the skid steer is broken. So what I am gonna do is I'm just gonna go down and start on that other box. I think dad might uh, try to cover this up for me. Tomorrow I have to go to Fargo, North Dakota to the full pot event. So, That'll, that'll be fun. That will be a good time. I just wish I wasn't quite as busy, but I have been committed to go to that for a while. I guess I can drive my feet. Still, I'm not used to driving an excavator with my feet, but oh well. But one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have me, well, it's a very dusty snack at the moment because my coat is still very dirty from the grain dust, but I have some wag bites, so. So for those of you that aren't familiar with Wag Bites or Wag Bars, same company, different product. These are the Wag Bites. These are Wag Bars. So these are made from American Wagyu beef. They are beef snacks. Just go ahead and open up these. These are my two favorite flavors. I have jalapeno cranberry Wag Bar. I really like, these are probably my favorite snack. And then we have the hot and spicy Wag Bars. I like these as well. Dax loves these. He always, uh, well, he eats all of them before I can really hide them. I have to keep a box hidden in my office. Otherwise, my kids eat them all. But uh, anyways, these are made from American Wagyu beef. Wag Bars was started by a couple guys in 2019. I believe they're out of Oklahoma. But uh, yeah, there's a Wag Bite. It's basically a bar. And it's got a, it's basically a bar that's been cut into little bitty pieces and it's got jalapenos and cranberries mixed in with it. And they're delicious. One thing I like about these, especially the bars, like they're extremely easy just to throw in your pocket. And like one of these wag bars, what are uh, 150 calories or something? Nice. It's a good, easy to carry, easy to store snack, healthy snack. So I've been partnered with wag bars now for Oh, probably a year and a half. 
And one thing really cool about it, this is a small grassroots company. It's really growing here lately. I mean, John is one of the founders of Wag Bar. He is who called me to set me up as an affiliate. So really like that aspect that, you know, you're a uh, really great company. It's, it's made with American beef. I mean, if you'd like to try some and you don't want to commit to ordering them online, you can catch them at any Love's Truck Stop nationwide. Anyways, I guess now I gotta get out and get back to digging. And I left my shovel. I definitely forgot the shovel. Hey, we're back at it. Got down here, dust is still rolling. You see the mirror there, I don't get but the dust is still rolling. The sun's starting to go down, but it's only like 28 degrees, so it'll freeze dry. So I think I can. So I got about two, three hours. Got this patch, about uh, 20 acres here, right at it, and 10 acres in the other field, 12 acres. So I hope that sprouts will stay on there, didn't get a set screw in it. Uh, but I don't think it had one in it for a good while. And so, so hopefully it don't slide over. I think if that changed pretty tight, so it might stay, it might stay uh, right where it is. It might hopefully stay in there. I think you can shield it off. Part of the air reel, so we can't use it. So, uh, see if we can get these done, buddy. Uh, after that, I think I think we'll be good. Dad can finish covering this with the bulldozer tomorrow. Probably goes somewhat quick. I don't know. I tried doing it with the bulldozer, and he's way better than I am with the dozer. Obviously, a lot more experience, but that dirt has settled so much. It's kind of hard to angle it in there with that big blade. Bit. Get our goon spoon. This is a goon spoon. In case you're wondering, I will be your goon operator. And this is what we're digging up. Big chunks of twos and fours. So, a little history lesson whenever the paper mill owned this property. So this property that we're at was at one time owned by the U.S. War Department or Navy Department. I guess I don't know how they had that broken out. But basically this was a munitions plant for the U.S. Navy in World War II. And after that, that's where all those buildings over there, the block barn beside our shop, that's where it came from. But after that, Mead Paper, Shell Coffee owned this property and used it as a storage facility. And a lot of this gravel came from them. Because at one point, this was an auxiliary log yard for them. So they put in a very aggressive road. Unlevel we are. Pretty unlevel. Oh yeah, got to bring it down a lot over there. We're almost perfect side to side. Like this way. I'm gonna dig a little bit out over there and a little bit here. Ah, we dug out too much. Dad would say good enough roots for. Be cold, be cold. Good news is swarming here. Don't know what the neighbors got on fire. Something's burning. Well, apparently our mic didn't work through any of that. Wonderful, wonderful. People will say, why don't you use lav mics? That's a lav mic. It's another point of failure, that's why. All right, anyways, we should probably Throw some dirt on that with a shovel, and then we can cover it up with the, the big shovel. I'm trying to be kind of delicate right now. Brown now, so we're gonna head back to the house. 
get a walkthrough slash update for you guys. Hello, Mrs. Brown. Well, let's go inside and turn the heat on. Oh, wait. We're not that far along, folks. Well, it's a battery-powered DeWalt heater. So the house is definitely getting there. Kitchen is kind of one of the main things we're waiting on. Bunch of little things, but... It's a lot darker in here than I was expecting, but... See, we got the beams up. Yeah, it looks clearer in here than it is in person. Right, still don't have our fireplace just yet. You wanna go show my bathroom? So this is the... Well, this is our bedroom. We do have tile. It's not quite done, there's no grout yet. So Kayla, what's our bathroom made of? Our shower? The walls are micro cement from Surecrete. So Kayla wanted micro cement. This is the first time our builders used it, the first time we've ever seen it. It kind of just looks like drywall right now. What do you think of it? I mean, I like it. That's why I picked it. But our bathtub was supposed to be the... Did you get anything on that? There's going to be a bathtub right there. And a sh two shower faucets there and there. And then the main seat in the house is right here. And our two sinks. Want to go check anything else out? Sure. So we're still thinking around Christmas move in. Is that what you're thinking? Mrs. Brown's been packing for two weeks. Listen, I just found out that I have to, like four personal days and I have to use them before January. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Laundry room. So this is the second bathroom, kids' shower. Oops. I like the way it looks. I really like the way it looks. You like the Even different, different colors kind of blending in together? So there's two coats that are being applied, and this is just the first coat. So, like right here, it's pretty rough looking. I think it looks like drywall mud at the moment, but that is not the final. There'll be a second coat. You wanna go show them your pantry? I like your pantry. So our kitchen, I wish I, I wish our kitchen was here because I think it's gonna be pretty sweet, but basically, right there is gonna be our refrigerator slash pantry on that whole wall. And then right here, we have an eight by eight kitchen island with eight seats around it. <laughs> you did so good. And then on this wall, we have our sink. I think our oven. Sink. Possibly oven, I don't know. Maybe the oven's over here, actually. I think it's gonna work out pretty good. I think it's gonna be pretty sweet. And then that leaves the rest of this big room. This room's 30 by 30 as the uh, living room. So Kayla seen this on Pinterest, left a picture here and didn't really say anything. And then we came in one day and here it was. It was me. I wish stuff happened like that all the time. <laughs> we just lay a picture and then boom, there it is. Well, it worked out pretty good. I can't wait to see you trying to get something off the top shelf. That's where I'm gonna hide things from you. That's where I'm gonna hide my chocolate from my kids. Hopefully they don't see this. And then down in the basement, we have our basement treads on. There was just temporary steps, but these have been updated. Nice big stairs. Much better, much better. Way gooder. Way gooder, Kayla. Yeah, it's not I don't know. Looks like a piece of plywood. But down here, not a whole lot has changed other than our shutter door is now installed. So now we have a place to get away from the tornadoes. Yay! There's our in-floor heat. I'm pretty excited for that this year. One thing I did notice the other day, right somewhere in here, I seen one of them been cut. Well, you're in the way. Right there. That. That's a problem. Well, they had to cut a vent for something. Yeah, it's just a vent going straight up the attic. And they cut it. Well, this is different. This is new. So this is my studio podcast area. And we forgot there wasn't any door on it. And I was like, Ray, I need a door there. And he made something work. So, 
just a big open room at the moment. Attic space. Lots of lots of poofy insulation. And then in our garage, we still have a construction zone, but we have doors. All the doors are hung now. I didn't even really realize that, but utility closet in here. And a garage bathroom. Yeah, that's kind of the update on our house. I'd say it's a closet runs. Just a guess. We're pretty excited. We have pretty much decided that one way or another we're opening Christmas gifts here. It's just a matter of we're going to sleep here that night. Where's the tree going? Which one? Because we're going to have a few. Where's the main Christmas tree where the gifts are going to go? Sounds like a lot of walking to put stuff up. So a couple things that still have to happen. These doors are gonna be black. I guess still gonna get painted. Those doors are also gonna be black and point where the windows go. Can't do it and hold the light. There's gonna be a window kit that goes right to there. So they're supposed to be a little bit longer in the window pane area, but uh, instead of ordering all new doors, they just, they got a window kit. So that should work pretty well. And then hopefully our fireplace is in today or this week and then kitchen next week hopefully kitchen electric and water next week now mrs brown's going to take this escalator back to the house and that's going to be it for the night folks well we've just finished up that field this little field there so we got done over here's farm so we got two more fields to go 40 and 30. hopefully finish up tomorrow so it's about what uh, 7:30. Starting to get a little tough. Cold out. It's frozen, but uh, gonna be a little frost probably. But, uh, I'll get the head off. Put uh, a little gleaner in the shed. I try her again tomorrow. Well, guys, that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. Like I say, if you're interested in a wag bar, go ahead and check those things out. Really delicious snack. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next.